Welcome friends to a new session on the course School Organization, Administration and Management. This session will deal with the duties and responsibilities of a headmaster. Here we will discuss the general and main roles of the headmaster. We will also see the qualities of an effective headmaster. It also deals with some specific duties and responsibilities of a headmaster. The present session is an attempt towards exploring the academic role of a headmaster and need of his professional development. As an educational leader, the headmaster shoulders various responsibilities, takes policy decisions, frames rules and regulations and adopts different means to ensure a healthy and productive environment for teaching learning activities. And for the sake of achieving coveted standard and excellence in education, he or she works in a vibrant manner. He or she pays due attention to the development of subordinates. The job of a headmaster is quite demanding and challenging, especially in the context of educational development and institutional effectiveness. Each day affords a rare wealth of experience and opportunities for creative thinking and discovering plausible solutions to the problems. It is incumbent on the headmaster to involve members of the staff and representatives from among the students to seek and suggest solutions to the problems. It will lead to shaping the styles and behavior of the members of the staff and students. The role of the headmaster of a school has been identified as a primary factor that contributes to the proper and desired growth and excellence of the school. The headmaster plans and executes for the bright future of the students, tries to achieve desirable standards for all students and staff, supervises effectively the functioning of the school as per the policies, norms and planning, evaluates lesson plans, observes classes and encourages the use of a variety of instructional strategies, supervises general discipline, attendance and related issues, displays the highest ethical and professional behavior, serves as a role model for students and the teaching staff, encourages all teachers to display high level of professionalism, assumes responsibility for the health, safety and welfare of students, employees and visitors, communicates regularly with parents seeking their support and advice so as to create a cooperative relationship with all the sectors, keeps the staff informed and seeks ideas for the improvement of the school through meetings and interactions etc. and maintains positive, cooperative and mutually supportive relationships with staff. Main Roles of the Headmaster Based on the functions, responsibilities and duties, we can summarize the crucial roles of a headmaster. The first role is as a facilitator or resource manager. A headmaster like any other administrator is responsible for arranging and utilizing resources of all kinds. The infrastructural aspects of a school need to receive special attention of the leader. Of course, the interest of the leader is based on his or her version and future prospects. Human resource in particular is the ultimate focus of the organization and the leader. The second role is as a trendsetter. Morally as well as professionally, a leader has to keep track record of good work, attach importance to sincere sense of calling, commitment, dedication and hard work. The leader has to set a trend in order to seek and receive cooperation and participation in the collaborated efforts for the sake of the uplift of the institution. And the third is as a motivator. Motivation is a vital factor in the amelioration of all kinds of administrative and educational setup. In today's educational scenario, Modern and dynamic principles need to be available for the groups of students, teachers and community representatives. 
the leader or administrator is basically responsible for employing psychological or motivational techniques to become actively involved in the existing system for the betterment of teaching learning activities. The fourth is as a head teacher. Educationally, the principal is the head or the leader of the group by being senior and more experienced. But in the modern scenario, the position of the headmaster is viewed only from the angle of a manager of the school who runs or leads and has nothing to do with the academics. While the fact is that by virtue of his or her, her teaching experiences, a principal can afford valuable insight into the teaching learning setting and provide remedies if there are challenges. Fifth, the headmaster as a philosopher. A philosopher is often considered as a creature belonging to the some other planet. But the fact is that every educationist is basically a philosopher. If one has no vision of philosophy or thought or ideology, one can't bring desirable changes in the educational system. In the same way, one cannot make any contributions towards the betterment of the society. Sixth, as a trainer or professional developer. A headmaster is not only a leader or a manager of the teachers, resources or the institutions, but also a trainer of his or her subordinates. He or she has to share his experiences with juniors to develop them as well. Seventh, headmaster as an academic leader. Educational research shows that most school variables considered separately have at most small effects on learning. The real payoff comes when individual variables combine to reach critical mass. Creating the conditions under which that can occur is the job of the principal. Some of the crucial roles usually performed by the headmaster as an academic leader are shaping a vision of academic success for all students, creating an atmosphere conducive to the growth of education, inculcating leadership values among the subordinates and juniors, improving instruction, managing people, records or data, resources to further the process, minimize the chance of waste and finally realize the goals. Duties and responsibilities of the headmaster. The headmaster is the administrative and professional leader of a school and as such he or she is directly responsible for its successful operation. The major qualities of the headmaster in the field of education is leadership and supervision with stress on the improvement of teaching and learning. To bring about this improvement, he or she should call upon all the resources of the school. Some of the major duties of the headmaster are supervision. Supervision means overseeing the work done by the teaching staff. Supervision improves the total teaching learning situation. The primary duty of the principal is to develop and implement an effective instructional program appropriate to the students in his or her school. Careful attention should be given to the supervision of teachers and other instructional personnel working in the school including both full-time and part-time personnel. A headmaster should have certain principles of supervision and some of them are its purpose is to help, encourage and guide rather than criticize. It should be done in a spirit of cooperation. It should be done regularly and effectively. Partiality and prejudice should find no place in it. The criteria of supervision should be known to teachers. Classroom is the heart of teaching situation. It is a center of instruction. It is a duty of the headmaster to upgrade the quality of education through creative, cooperative and constructive supervision. Class visits form an essential part of the duties of the headmaster. When the headmaster finds any defect with any teacher, he or she should discuss the matter after the period is over in the headmaster's office and not in front of the class. He or she should work as an expert source of help through free discussions with them. 
the headmaster should work with the teachers to improve the learning environment. This will be possible through mutual esteem and trust which again depends upon contact and interaction. The second duty of the headmaster is teaching. The headmaster is the education leader. He or she is essentially a teacher. So, he or she must never get out of touch with day to day classroom situations. They will not be in a position to provide education leadership if they stop teaching and gets out of touch with their specialized subject and the techniques of teaching. Their function is to guide education and educators in new methods, new techniques of education, new approaches, new outlooks and new ways of doing the old job. From them flows a continuous stream of new ideas to deal with rapidly changing educational scene. They should resolve to do old things in a new way and deliver them to his or her students in classrooms. Headmaster of a school is a teacher first. Teaching is their fundamental duty. Headmasters remain so much absorbed in other duties that they never enter classes. But they should engage at least two periods a day on specialized classes. Despite some frustration of administration and demands on their time, instruction is one of the most important responsibilities and duties of a headmaster. He or she is a key person charged with the responsibilities of improving instruction. By actually teaching, the headmaster comes to know the standards of students in different classes and standard of teaching in school. They also understand the difficulties of students and teachers. A headmaster cannot be an expert in all instructional areas. In spite of the fact that headmasters are overburdened with a number of other duties, they should be good teachers conversant with content of and the latest methods of teaching. It will be appropriate with their position and prestige if they teach one of the most important subjects of the syllabus. The third main duty is planning. Unless the headmaster plans for the school, there will be confusion all around. For making proper planning, help of pupils, teachers and parents should be taken. Most of the planning will take place in the course of discussion of school problems in the staff meetings and student councils. In some schools, certain situations arise like teachers without students, classes without teachers, class sections with enrollment twice the capacity of the room, where teachers are handicapped because of shortage of supplies, lack of books and equipments etc. This state of affairs is due to inadequate planning in schools. The plans have to be drawn collectively by the headmaster, members of the staff, students council and parent teacher association. The fourth duty of the headmaster is organization and administration. The administrative functions of the headmaster can be external and internal. The external function connects the headmaster with government, the state department of education, the high school education board and the governing body. The internal function connects with the internal functions of the school office and administering the school budget and the school plant. The organization and administration areas can be further subdivided into various duty areas. The first one is school plant. In the organization of the school, the headmaster should procure adequate furniture and equipment for the school. He or she should make a petty repairs, distribute the furniture, look into the buildings, organize laboratories, the workshop and the library and take care of the sanitation and entire material aspect of the school plant. He or she has to keep sanitation and water supply in good condition and has to procure for the school all, all types of latest amenities. He or she will also see to it that the library is well equipped with latest literature. The second is the instructional work. The headmaster also looks into the instructional work of the school including construction of curriculum, preparation and distribution of syllabi, work distribution among the staff, allotment of co-curricular duties, 
construction of the time schedule and the school calendar. The third being co-curricular activities. It refers to the organization and administration of various activities during the session like experimental projects, sports, tournaments, debates, celebration of important days, inter-house competitions, alumni associations, parent-teacher associations and other activities. The headmaster has to ensure that these activities serve the desired educational purposes. The fourth is the office work. The headmaster has to see to it that the office plays its key role in the running of the school very effectively. He or she has to get various things done by the office such as official correspondence, registration, routine work, collection of fees, maintenance of accounts, preparation of the school budget and making purchases for the school. The fifth is discipline. The headmaster should be a firm but considerate and strict disciplinarian. He or she should ensure that the academic climate of the school is not spoiled by frequent cases of indiscipline. He or she should also involve responsible teachers and leading students in the establishment of a healthy discipline in the institution. Now the fifth main duty being the maintenance of relations. In respect of human relations in an institution, the headmaster again occupies a key position. His or her own success and the success of the school depends mostly on the relations that they cultivate and maintain with the staff, the students, their parents and the community at large. First let us see the relations with the staff. The relations should be cordial, pleasant and affectionate. He or she must have humanitarian and sympathetic outlook. He or she should rule with love and kindness rather than with his position and authority. He or she should not suffer from an air of superiority, false pride and arrogance. They should keep staff in high spirits by encouraging and appreciating. Should also abstain from negative methods of maintaining discipline such as threats, punishments, fault finding, surprise checking and secret reporting. He or she must not fail to recognize the individual differences in order to make judicious allotment of work and responsibilities to various teachers. They should ensure that undue tasks are not thrust on anybody. While taking major decisions, advice must be taken from teachers. They must be able to take teachers into confidence on all important matters. This will encourage a spirit of mutual cooperation and responsibility and will establish healthy relations based on mutual understanding. The second is the relation with students. Although from disciplinary point of view, the headmaster is required to maintain a distance with the students, this distance must be narrowed down to the limit of maintaining both intimacy and respect. His or her relations with the students must be based on understanding, goodwill, progress and welfare for all. The headmaster should develop these relations by taking interest in the students in respect of their progress in studies, their difficulties if any, their participation in activities, their problems in and outside the school, their health etc. He or she should be easily accessible to any student in need. It is the duty of the headmaster to mix freely with the students when they are on the play field, out on a picnic, participate in, a, in activities etc. It will be a great asset to know the names of as many students as possible and address them by their names. They should be affectionate, kind, intimate and sympathetic towards students. He or she should be looked upon by others as a sincere guide and reformer. The third is the relations with parents. The headmaster has to act as a liaison between the school and the society. He or she must avail all the opportunities of direct and indirect contacts with the parents and other members of the community. It is very important to know the parents and other members of the community. 
they may be invited to the school functions and to the meetings of the par parent teacher associations when the parents are in a position to give some voluntary help to the school the headmaster should not miss the opportunity he or she should rather create situations for their constant involvement in the activities of the school the fourth is the relations with the community the headmaster should try to project his school as a center of community life with constant efforts he should bridge the gap between the school and the community he or she should find out what the community expects from the school and try to satisfy the demands of the community through his able administration he or she should be able to exploit the resources of the community for the benefit and welfare of the school they can introduce a number of activities in school which prove attractive for the community such as school versus community competitions in games use of school library by the desirous members of the community arranging of exhibition variety performances documentary film shows organizing social service programs and inviting well known speakers to speak on topics of general interest the headmaster may himself become an active member of some of the social and cultural organizations of the community he or she should also establish relation with the district public relations officer the local press and other allied departments engaged in the welfare and upliftment of the community the sixth responsibility is guidance the headmaster is the chief guide for all the colleagues and students guidance can be provided in a variety of ways like the students need his guidance in the selection of subjects at the secondary stage where diversification of courses take place in order to be competent he or she must understand the implications of aptitude interest intelligence and achievement in the choice of subjects leading to connected vocations and vocational courses second guidance may be required by the students in their day to day difficulties in learning and other activities thirdly the teachers may also need guidance in teaching work and other activities they may face problems of discipline truancy etc for which they may have to consult the headmaster fourth the parents may also seek guidance for educational as well as other problems of their wards fifth the higher authorities may seek the opinion and point of view of the headmaster in matters of curriculum revision selection of textbooks framing of educational policies and educational problems arising from time to time sixth the students may also seek guidance in purely personal problems emotional and mental difficulties ethical norms parental interference in their affairs and various other complications the headmaster has to enjoy the confidence and trust of his students so that they easily divulge their secrets and fears seventh the headmaster has to evolve and adopt appropriate remedial measures in cases which suffer from various educational and emotional problems the headmaster should set up a guidance corner in the school and establish contacts with state level guidance bureau employment officers and employers the effective functioning of this service will necessitate a lot of data collection record keeping reporting follow up and liaison with many other agencies now let us discuss some specific responsibilities of the headmaster the first one is regarding school supplies This involves planning of infrastructure facilities. Estimates are to be prepared regarding the quantity of purchases to be made. Specification of each item is to be laid down and quotations have to be invited and approved by the headmaster. Goods ordered should be inspected and checked on arrival. Headmaster will appoint a selection committee for the purchase and maintenance of equipment. The second responsibility is with respect to the school campus. School plant should provide adequate educational services. Best use of all the rooms, laboratories, workshops and the farm is made. 
In case of overcrowding, students may attend laboratories in groups. School may be used for its specific uses. All school buildings should be guarded against building hazards. The perfect upkeep of the school campus is the lookout of the headmaster. The third duty is co-curricular activities. The overall management of school co-curricular activities is the headmaster's responsibility. Various activities may be of course be distributed amongst the staff members in accordance with their previous background, interest and aptitude. Adequate budget allotment should be made for these activities. All wastage and unnecessary expenditure should be checked. The last duty being office management. The modern conception of the headmaster's office is that it is a service centre. Communication with higher authorities, the parents, the public, the teacher and the students is made by the headmaster. For the efficient functioning, the office must be located at a suitable place. It must be adequately spaced and proper upkeep ensured. Office work must be distributed adequately among members of the office staff. Headmaster must supervise their work, check irregularities, check inefficiency and ensure regular and prompt work. Thus, the headmaster must decide the time to be devoted for office work. The headmaster must make note of his or her office duties. The duties of the headmaster prescribed by the education department and managing committee should be strictly followed. The headmaster should strictly obey the rules and regulations of school board to which the school is affiliated. Routine duties of the headmaster should be admission, checking class registers, cash book, acquittance roll, attendance registers and accounts of various fees and fines. All these general duties and specific responsibilities of the headmaster would make better schools. Now let us summarize what we have just seen. The headmaster as an educational leader holds the key position in the school. The efficiency of the school depends on the ability and skill, personality and professional competence of the headmaster. The school is aptly called the lengthened shadow of the headmaster because the character of the school reflects or proclaims the character of the headmaster. In this session, we discussed the duties and responsibilities of a headmaster. We discussed in detail the general and main roles of the headmaster. We also saw the qualities of an effective headmaster and some specific duties and responsibilities. The present session is an attempt towards exploring the academic role of the headmaster and need of his professional development. Thank you for watching this session on the duties and responsibilities of a headmaster. We will meet again with another topic in another session. Till then, goodbye.